Thank you, thank you. Thank you, my sister, for that word. Uh, we always are grateful to the Lord for just blessing us, blessing us with um, the opportunity to pray, uh, especially during this time when it is, it is Women's Month. Um, we will share together, um, believe us, we will share together this morning from the book of Ezekiel. Um, and we are going to read together the chapter eight, chapter in the book of Ezekiel, chapter eight. And we're gonna read from verses 12 to 14. And the word that we're reading says, then said he unto me, Son of man, has, has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, the Lord sees us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the south. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. The emphasis of our message is that part that says, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Can we close our eyes as we pray? Our Father and our God, the word is yours. It was authored by you. And it assumes life only if, Lord, you infuse your Holy Spirit in it. It is my prayer that, Lord, allow us to write on your wings. I pray that, Lord, may you talk to our hearts, talk to our individual situations. That, Lord, you may bring us to a place of refreshing. A place that, Lord, we will always look to you and trust you. And you receive, and that we may receive your blessings into our lives. In Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, saints, this is a very, very interesting passage that we share in our devotion this morning. And, and the, it, 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 it is the basis of our title that says, virtuous women, do not cry for dead situations anymore. Cry to the Lord. I repeat, don't cry for your dead situations anymore. Cry to the Lord. Now, the context of the message that we share together is the following. Ezekiel is sitting in his house with the elders of Judah before him. Now on the outside, the elders look fine. I mean, they still look invested in spiritual matters. And as evidence, they are there in his house sitting with him. And they were probably there to inquire of the Lord. They were probably there to pray. But the hand of the Lord just falls on Ezekiel with power. And the Lord in a vision reveals to him what Ezekiel could never discern with his physical eyes. The Lord God omnipresent, before whom all things are open and laid bare, before him no creature can hide. You know, the Lord God who searches the inner things and the hidden things of the hearts of men and women, opens the spiritual eyes of Ezekiel to see the true picture of what was happening in the private hidden places of those gathered in the temple. The omniscient one who searches the dark hidden chambers of the heart, see who sees beyond the outward manifestations of what men and, and women do and say. He, he, he gives Ezekiel a certain vision. He says he shows him men within the temple in a hidden room with every form of imaginable creeping thing. Abominable beasts and idols on the wall. But these things were a representation of the disgraceful, obscene and detestable things that they were doing outside of full view. Yes, indeed, they seemed religious. Yes, they seemed to be smooth talkers, but on the outside, that's what they were, but inside they were ravening wolves. Yet in the temple, they were dishonest, they were un unfaithful and they were abusive. But you know, all the women were doing even more worse, worse things outside of plain sight. At the entrance of the temple, at the door of the Lord's house, where people are supposed to be coming in and out, here were women weeping for Tammuz. You see, Tammuz was a shepherd god 
who according to mythology was killed by a wild boar and came back to life after his wife Esther went to the underworld to search for him. According to the tradition of the surrounding nations, every year the women were supposed to mourn for his terrible death. And if you look closely at this description that I've provided about Tammuz, you see a counterfeit lacking truth and life. That is at the core. Tammuz represented that counterfeit that seems like faith, that seems like religion, but it lacks life, it lacks truth. It was trying to emulate Jesus who was killed and is now resurrected. You see, Tammuz represented a type of Christianity that had crept in and believed that has crept in. In many ways, like a Christianity that is full of a life religion, active religion with traditions, but with a form of godliness, yet denying its power. Tammuz also represented a place of lifeless activity, a place of grief, a place of bitterness, a place of feeling forsaken and abandoned. Now you may be asking this morning during this devotion and say, but how could it be that women in the temple find themselves in this situation? You see, I venture to say today that the women knew and saw what their fathers, what their husbands, what their sons, what their priests, what their elders and leaders were doing in the hidden places. The women knew. They were tired, they were discouraged, Many were disappointed, they were disillusioned, they were feeling betrayed, and they started to cry at the wrong place. They started to weep and look for solutions from the wrong person. They, 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 they wanted comfort from things that could not deliver them. They chose to respond to what was happening around them in the same way that the world was responding to their issues. And the message today is stop crying for dead situations, but lift up your eyes to the hill from whence comes your help and lift your cries to the Lord. You see, in many ways, the process of mourning for Tammuz represented the internal mourning of the women because of the state of temple worship, because of the state of relationships, even in the temple, the type of relationships that were all platonic on the surface relationships. At times, relationships that are fake and lacking authenticity. You know, at times they, they were mourning a time where present credibility and sincerity of leaders was in question. There was scarcity of ethical, moral, upright, courageous, and servant leadership. You see, these, these women were mourning because they saw an environment that had evolved and, and it scorned and it belittled and it laughed at qualities of righteousness instead of celebrating it. They, their mourning to Tammuz represented their own internal brokenness and grief that they were hiding from the world and they were hiding from each other. And the Lord just made a revelation and he was revealing to Ezekiel and said, see them and see the mourning that is in the heart of these women. You know, there may be someone listening to this message who, who can probably relate to the state. Someone may be feeling stuck they may be struggling to get up and move on from the bitter pool. You know, still watching that situation in your life that has completely devastated you. Still grieving and feeling broken and feeling forsaken, perhaps by the betrayal of somebody that you trust. There are many today who in their private lives have dead situations that had turned themselves into little tamuses. Situations that consume our emotions and burn us inside to the point of distorting the work of Calvary in our lives. May we pray today for strength to turn from these places because they may not be physical uh, tamuses, they may not be physical idols, but there is something about pain. There is something about the pain and its ability to numb the heart. And I believe that's why the devil uses it as a powerful instrument. He causes pain. He causes discouragement because he knows what it does to the heart of men and women. You see, the key lesson today from these women who are weeping for Tammuz is that we must remember that if women at the gate 
are looking in the wrong direction, focusing on the right things. Those who come in through the gate are likely to follow suit. You see, the women were sitting at a strategic position, which was the gate at the entrance of the temple where people were moving in and out. And if the first thing people see in your house as a mother, that you are looking at the wrong direction, focusing on the wrong things. The people that will follow you will do the same. So may the Lord give us as women during this month that awareness of the power and the influence of our lives. That we, are, we, we have the power either to be a legacy builder or a legacy breaker. Today's question is, are you willing to go from that bitter pool, to move from that place of pain, that place of bitterness, of weeping at a dead situation, going around the same mountains of anger, a place of constant mourning for things that have failed and things that have not worked for your life. Are you willing today to let God, to let go and let God create a new thing in your life? You see, at times we sit and we mourn for so long for dead situations, for disappointments, for pain, for betrayal, for rejection, whatever it is. At times we sit so long that we ourselves end up dying in these situations. These situations killing us emotionally, killing us spiritually, or even physically through deterioration of health. Today's message is a wake up call for all of us to reorientate our direction and set our eyes firmly on the Lord to give us wisdom and direct our path. You see, there are times when, when situations drain all your energy and you start feeling powerless. But the truth is that we are never powerless as women of God. In every situation, we still retain the power of choice. You see, among the women who had frequently attended the temple were mothers of kings were mothers of princes, were mothers of the Levites, of priests, mothers of commanders, and mothers of men of the clay. While they lived in a patriarchal society, these men were not without influence. These women were not without influence. You only have to look at the influence of a woman like Eve, or Rebecca, or Sarah, or Rachel, or even Solomon's many foreign wives. You only have to look at the influence of Jezebel or Athaliah to appreciate that women wield an innate ability even those of nature, we have an ability to influence both what happens in the home, what happens in politics, and what happens in our society, and how the world evolves. And, and therefore, we, these women were not powerless, and today we are not powerless. We still have the freedom and power of choice. And um, although there was an image of jealousy sitting in the temple, that did not mean it gave them the permission to be unfaithful to God. The fact that he or she has stabbed you in the back does, it, does not mean you must be consumed with hate and bitterness. Let your standard not be set by the lowest common denominator. You know, I love this, this quote from the book Invictus, and it's something that apparently um, Nelson Mandela used to like. And, and it encouraged him, it says, it matters not how straight the gate or how charged the punishment, the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Now you and I as believers know that the Lord is the one who charts our lives, but the message is that God has given us the ability to choose how we to respond, we respond to situation. We can never allow pain or disappointment to turn and twist us to what we were not designed to be. We cannot allow, you, you know, allow us to, 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 to degrade us, but must, it, it must propel us to a better and greater place. It must move us to higher ground. You know, um, these women were sitting at a strategic point in history. The winds of change were blowing in Judah and Israel. You know, because of the gross mismanagement of the legacy bestowed upon the people and the gifts that God had given, they, were, they had given them, they were actually sitting at a place where God was about to leave the temple. There had never been a time like that in the nation of Israel. And there were the very women who were, we, who were there for such a time as this. God had anointed them to be at the temple in the North Gate for such a time as this. But what do they do? They sit and weep for dead situations. Instead of saying, I am taking these dead situations and I'm changing my worldview. I am going into the temple and I'm going to lay them like, like you know, Hannah goes and cries and lays 
them at the feet, you know, at the temple, and he she just weeps. And I pray that the Lord will give us, will give us that heart today, that heart of Hannah that says, Lord, I, 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 I am here. I am standing in the gap for a nation. All of us see the sheer level of corruption, the moral de degradation. We see it everywhere. It is time that we stand in the gap, that we, we pray for our nations, that, that, that we, we pray for our families, we pray for our husbands, we pray for our husbands, we pray for our fathers, we pray for our sons, we pray for our daughters, our leaders. We are here for such a time as this. We are here for such a time as this. You know, even when a man like Ahab cried to the Lord, you know, Ahab was wicked, we all know that. But when, when at one point in his life where Ahab prayed and, and earnestly cried to the Lord, you know, the Lord was, was, was willing to relent and, and hear the prayer of Ahab and give him repose. Even when Manasseh, a wicked Manasseh, repented and prayed earnestly, the Lord heard and the Lord mingled his judgment with mercy. So as, as we close, as we enter into a, a season of prayer, it is my prayer that today we may say, Lord, I, 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 am, I, I have these things. You know, I, I have these things. At times we, we think we have forgiven, but quite frankly, we have not because this thing keeps visiting us. You look at a person and all of them are but shows that this thing is still in you. It's still inside. You know, may the Lord see these things that we struggle with in our secret places. I know the Lord has seen our hearts. He knows, he knows, he knows the things that we struggle with. He knows our disappointments, he knows our pain. And I pray that, you know, the Lord may help us, that he, that he may move our eyes from fixating on dead situations. But that we, we may lift our eyes to the hills. You know, like when, when Moses lifted up the, the brass serpent, when the children of Israel were terrorized by snakes all over, they were, for as long as the children of Israel kept their eyes focused on the brass serpent, it says and they were healed. May we this morning just lift our eyes, lift our eyes, lift our eyes, lift our eyes to the Lord, to the living God. And may we intercede, as I say, for, for, for the people, the people in our homes, the men, the leaders in our local churches, in our conferences and in our country. May we cry to the Lord this morning to forgive, to forgive. May we ask the Lord to cleanse, but we pray for the Lord to revive us, to create in us a new heart and, and give us that steadfast spirit that will, well, that will forever just lift, lift us to higher ground whenever we find ourselves on the ground. May he heal the wounded, broken spirits of his men. And at these women, to this woman's month, this woman's month, can, can he heal our broken spirit and save us by his grace? Amen. So I'm going to ask us to, to pray before we hand over to the coordinator. Um, our Father, we, we thank you. you. You are a God who's so amazing. Father, you are so amazing. We can run, we can run, we can look beautiful, we can hide so many things from people, but... I am grateful. I am grateful and I worship you because we can never mm. hide from you. Mm. You say we can never hide from you. And that assures us that even the blind spots that we have, you are a God who's able to deal with them. I, I believe that, Lord, there is a reason for this word in our lives. You are seeing things that we, we, we are not telling any person. You are seeing them and you know that if they are allowed to stay in our lives, they have an ability to steal the kingdom from us. They have an ability to steal the blessings that you've given us. I ask that you minister to our souls, that we may be a woman who are lifted up, that we may be a woman who do not sit in places of mourning as though we do not have a living God, but that we may remember that even through the value of the shadow of death, you are with us. And therefore we can even walk through those places with the assurance that when we are weak, yet we are strong because your strength is made perfect in our weakness. I pray, Lord, for our, all these women on this call in a very special way and those that will listen to this message. I pray that you lift us up to a place that you have set for us. I glorify you, I worship you, and I bow down before you because you are Lord and indeed you are good. In Christ Jesus, we pray.
Amen.